Evan, what do you think of lactation? Oh, it's pretty base. <laughs> All right. This movie's gonna flop. Our mind's about to pop. But enough of that noise. Time for the B-roll, boys. Welcome to another lactating episode of B-Roll Boys. This week we watched Species from 1995, directed by Roger Donaldson. I am your host, Justin. With me, I have Harlan. Hello, humans. And Wes. Hello, fellow human. And wow, that yeah. was really unoriginal. That was just my <laughs> thing, but worse. Come on. No, it was that was striking out twice. Huh. Hey. <laughs> Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> so yeah, we watched Species, and um, so <laughs> growing up, the only reason I knew this existed is because my dad had the entire DVD box set. <laughs> Dude, everyone's dad has this box set. <laughs> <laughs> this is a dad box set movie. <laughs> <laughs> this is a Father's Day box set. If, you, if your dad that's doesn't when I have can this. get this because I do kind of want to get the bo- the Blu-ray Blu-ray box set. I need to shop around in June, right before Father's Day. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Star Trek Enterprise and then Species. <laughs> we had the Star Trek box set too. Exactly. Um, but yeah, so uh, I think you guys enjoyed this more than I. I knew that Wes was going to enjoy this. I didn't think you would enjoy this this much. Yeah, um, it was, I mean, yeah. Like, I thought you were going to be bored. No, I, I mean, we, we were watching it and like, and I was surprised, I was taking it like surprisingly seriously, you know, for the first <laughs> little bit. And then, and then the movie kind of got stupider as it went on and on, you know, <laughs> it kind of devolved into stupidity, uh, but I was, I was still enjoying it. So. It might be a dumb movie sense of mine, but five seconds in, I was like, okay. This is about to get fucking stupid here. <laughs> but yeah, um, I'm actually kind of surprised with myself that I've never seen this one before. Yeah, so this is so up your one. alley. I'm surprised you don't have like a poster of this. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It was just one of those things that just kind of fell off just my never and I just never yeah. went, up, went back and watched it. I don't know. It's like, I'm recommending a mid-90s <laughs> sci-fi cheese fest? Even. How the tables have turned. Ugh. But now it's in my repertoire and, you know, we're Next good. Next you're going to be choosing, like, Happy Madison and children's <laughs> films. No, that won't be happening. <laughs> Alright, so, uh, this... Essentially, this is Terminator 3 and a half? Kind of? I definitely enjoyed it more than Terminator 3. Me too. Yeah. Like, it's not even a competition for me. Like... I, yeah, like, like I like legit enjoyed this. I was kind of like, I don't see why this is that bad. And but yeah, it, like I said, it got stupider as it went on. But yeah, like uh, there were some scenes in the beginning that were like kind of tense, and I was like legit like invested in it. Well, even the dumb scenes are like in such a great dumb way that it's still good. <laughs> the, this is a very good pick for the show, you know, because like it's it's <laughs> it's as we said, it's stupid, but it, it, this movie definitely has its redeeming qualities. And like yeah, like it it, it held my attention the whole time and blah blah blah. You know. Yeah, Justin, we gotta talk. You gotta stop picking ten out of ten bangers for the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like I, me and Evan watched it like a month or two ago, because I've been meaning to watch it for like twenty years, and then I just never did. Oh, so you'd never seen it until recently? Yeah, gotcha. this is my second time watching it, and I thought, oh my god, there's no way we can't do this for the show. <laughs> yeah. It's too perfect. Yeah. Well, now we can watch Species two, three, and four. Two, three, and Awakening. Oh yeah, they all. They I always get that embarrassed shit. that they That's made a, too many. Yeah. Well, I mean, I the first one s- went. The second one went. Uh, or was a theatrical release. The second two were direct to TV. Oh really? Yeah. Wow. So this. Those uh, are gonna be dog shit. <laughs> this is kind of like the magnum opus of the yeah. series, from what mm-hmm. I understand. I hear they get raunchier. This makes sense though, because this is totally a blockbuster movie. Like I see this thing 100%. being like rented out like every single weekend. Definitely. <laughs> This well, came yeah. out in 95, there's titties, there's murder. This is one of those where, like, your 17-year-old older brother rents it for you. <laughs> yeah, it's like day one of being able to rent R-rated movies. It's like, <laughs> we're getting species. <laughs> we're gonna see titties through, like, 60% of the movie. Uh, Which so is a y- solid percentage, though. Yeah. I mean, essentially it starts out in Sir Ben Kingsley has mixed alien DNA that he found with human DNA and it like rapidly grows into a little girl that they have grow up in a lab and they kind of just decide out of nowhere to kill her I, is it because she's developing too fast 
I think it's so. like oh, well, she's like a month old, but she's. It's because they showed some. Uh, she was like having nightmares. Yeah, yeah, she was having nightmares, and for some reason they were like, "All right, put her down." <laughs> well, because <laughs> while she was asleep, they she started got... seeing these weird tentacle things like coming out of her back, and they're like, "Well, that's not cool. Wait, did we they... should probably kill her." They didn't see the tentacles coming out. She was just kind of like convulsing. Well, yeah, they, no, they, 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 they showed just... like little things coming, not full tentacle out of the skin, but oh, like, like little nubs. They showed shit like <laughs> bubbling up out of her back and stuff. So they're gonna put her down like old Yeller, <laughs> and then she, yeah, she's kind of like a teenage or like ad- adolescent girl, and she breaks out of the facility. She swan dives out of this like glass tank that they're keeping her in. Yeah, and um, <clears throat> does she kill any? No, she doesn't kill anybody in the lab. She, no, she no. kill. They try to gas her with cyanide gas, and she breaks out and kills the guys that are in hazmat suits. Yeah. Did she kill him? Well, like the cyanide gas kills them, but they're like falling right. The no, yeah, she she herself doesn't like it. physically like yeah. kill anybody but with her own hands. She incidentally kills them. Yeah, uh, uh, until she gets to the train. Maybe she got a yeah. thirst for it. Oh. No, but I do love movies that start out with a good facility escape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, it's very she's... Resident Evil. <laughs> yeah, and those are other movies that we gotta watch on the show sometime. I, I got the Blu-rays sure. for two and three, and I'm so excited. I got the Blu-rays for all seven recently because they came in a mega pack for like twenty bucks. Oh my god! I know. I, I really to. only need the first three. We watched so four and it was bad. Species, resident species. What? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but um, yeah. So she escapes and gets to a train, kills a homeless guy by like bending him in half. <laughs> Or no, she throws him into the wall and then he crumples like uh, like gang beasts. <laughs> it shows <was> great. <laughs> and he's just like a bloody mess. So Ben Kingsley gets together the greatest like C grade actors that he can. We've got uh, Michael Madsen as like the the heavy as Preston Lennox. Yeah, they Preston call him Preston. L- okay, they call I, him I Press say, the you, whole you, time. You, like I missed that name and Wes said it. And I thought it was like Linux, like the OS, but but it's Lennox. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Linux, like, like Lennox. the mall that people get killed at. Here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like the murder mall in Atlanta. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, but anyhow. <laughs> oh yeah, we got Michael Madsen as the heavy. He's the one that calls when you don't want something alive. You saying there's some alien out here? He sucks in this. He does suck in this. <laughs> He's like phoning it in pretty hard. Yeah. Yeah. I, not that I think that Michael Madsen is necessarily like some Shakespearean performer or anything, but like he's pretty flat in this. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's a reason he ended up in Sci-Fi Channel originals like a lot, like way too much. And this, which is essentially a Sci-Fi original. <laughs> yeah. Um, we've also got, uh, yeah, Ben Kingsley is like, oh, his name is Xavier Fitch. He was knighted. <laughs> Alfred Molina is this fucking, like, anime dork that's a scientist they bring in. <laughs> you mean Doc Ock? Yeah, Dr. Octopus. We got uh, Marg Helgenberger as Dr. Dr. Laura Baker. I could go for a Helgenberger. And then the fucking worst part of this movie, Forrest Whitaker as Dan. He and, is he and, is unequivocally the worst part of this Dan, movie. And Dan, it's the first like one of the first lines he says is sets the tone for his annoying ass presence in the whole movie. He says, "I'm an empath." Dude, I hate he when people say that. He predicted the future. They basically like, that's like well beyond being an empath. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, yeah. They say that he's an empath, but then they basically just that gives him license to just straight up be psychic. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, like he's got the fucking shine. They're like, they're like <laughs> fucking like pussyfooting around it in the beginning of the movie. They're like, oh, he's an empath, and you think that's just gonna mean like, oh, he's like a people person or something? But no, he's like he straight up has like psychic links with people. It's like just fine. yeah, he can well, like it, touch it, the ground and see the past and shit. <laughs> yeah, like, empath. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> like that's yeah. like, well, like first he just starts out looking at people. He's like, you feel this kind of way about this. I'm like, that's not really what an empath is, but okay. He tells people how they feel. Yeah, I, no, yeah, yeah. An, we, an empath we can't... is supposed to be that you're very receptive to, like, other people's emotions. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that you can literally just, like, read their mind. I mean, it's it's literally just an excuse for for the script to be lazy and have Forrest Whitaker explain how characters are feeling rather than, like, implementing that into the writing. You know, rather than writing, a, like, an, a scene or an interaction around that Forrest Whitaker will be just be like you're in love. Yeah. True. Oh, you're frustrated with this. Like, it's he's like, like the an, laziest fucking way to do it. He's like an end movie narrator. Yeah. <laughs> it's really weird. He's like the script. <laughs> <laughs> 
he's essentially just like the through line of the script. He's the cliff notes. <laughs> I hate that he's the worst part of this movie because he's been in a lot of good shit. Yeah. I mean, he's bad in this too. Like his his character sucks and I think his performance of this character sucks. Like, really maybe are... there isn't a good way to do this character, but like I don't know, he was not doing it for me. Oh, and and not just that, like like you know, setting aside like the annoying like empath psychic stuff, like he's also just fucking captain obvious throughout the whole movie. Like they'll all arrive at like a gruesome fucking murder scene and he'll be like she was here. It's like yeah. <laughs> Thanks. It's like yeah, this dude gets like his fucking his dick ripped neck. out through his mouth or something. <laughs> yeah, he gets his neck like blasted out. Yeah, true. He talks the whole movie, but basically said nothing. Like, yeah. Like of any kind of substance <laughs> at all. He's kind of like, uh, what was it, Phi from Skyward Sword? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, so yeah, we've got our Avengers, and we're basically on like a search and destroy mission for this blonde girl. And when she's on this train that she boards somehow... She keeps like stealing people's clothes that she kills, but um, yeah, she, she's and, just like, kind of stealing their stuff. She's just kind of blending in in plain sight, like just bullshitting her way through being a human. Well, and like she gets a hotel at one point. She gets on a train. Like, how is she getting going this far without a driver's license? This is ninety five. Um, it's just like the movie doesn't know where to draw the line. It's because like some things they're trying to act like she doesn't know how to do like read and shit. But, but she can drive a car perfectly. Yeah, yeah like, she can, ha- like she and some of that I can believe driving. that she could learn how to do pretty quick. You know, like, what? But, like, driving a car is, like, th- th- like a lot of the stuff she, you can, that she could infer and then, like, figure out how to do is just, like, human, like, instinct, you know? It, it comes naturally to us, or, or, you know, to a degree. Uh, but, like, driving a car, there's nothing natural about that. So, like, how the fuck did she pick that up? Well, like, you see that she's basically, like, observing people and what they're doing, and then she'll kind of re-employ it back to other people. Like, she'll use pickup lines that she saw from one character and then use them on another. But then she's just having full-on conversations by the end, and, like, did she just kind of pick this up by osmosis or what? Yeah. Because at first, like, she can't even form sentences, but by the end, she's, like, full-on... Well, she seduces Dr. Octopus pretty easily, but that didn't take a whole lot. <laughs> yeah. Man was down bad. <laughs> yeah. He is the he is like the total uh embodiment of down bad. Yeah. Down and, horrendous. And he's a beta pussy soy boy cuck. Like this team that that uh that uh Xavier Fitch assembles. Xavier uh, Fitch. Yeah, that's the name. Uh it's just I don't know, like it cause cause he's his department is being is like funded by the government like they're like a government entity but i'd feel like he could employ a a better group of people to hunt down this alien that's on the run from them because like it's just like it's a pretty small group and they just are kind of just like normal people like i don't see why they are like the best uh equipped to physically like hunt down and kill or at least capture this alien i mean he's got like cops and military and that's true. All Why is it their responsibility? But, but they for don't some have, like, reason, a like special forces team, yeah, like that's this devoted is, to this alien and, it, and it's such and it's such a small team that he has too. Like it's it, like it's it's like what like four people or something like that. Like it's a really small team, and yeah, they don't seem like especially skilled. We've got like an empath, a uh, hitman. <laughs> gonna laugh every two, time we say that. Two, and two scientists. Yeah, one's a Harvard professor. They're Alfred not trained to handle like, this. Or I think of one of one of them is like a sociologist, and then the other one's like an act, like a normal. It's like sure, scientist. sure. Those things, could, those like those, you know, professionals could be helpful in your team. But why are they? Well, yeah, they're like the the, the, the core ones. of your team. Like this is it. But Xavier Fitch has got like goons walking around. They look like Agent Smith following him around. Yeah, <laughs> and he'll be like lock down the highways or lock down the the train stations. It's like then yeah, why do you need these chumps? Why do you need My- Michael Madsen? To that burn is. out of every single, or like peel out of every single parking space that he's in. <laughs> That's true. Like they don't need to be the ones like just up there in front, just <laughs> wrangling this alien. Why are they? The, who is the general Patton of this? <laughs> well, I but, guess it was Preston Linux. Press. Yeah, Jesus they keep calling Christ. him Press. Preston I've never Linux. heard anyone called Press. I've known Fuck a few that Prestons, name. but Preston Linux. God. <laughs> <laughs> the, the one Preston Linux in the world is going to be heard. listening to this and crying himself to sleep. Oh, wait. Out of everything we watch, that name really stands out for some It's reason. just so, like, the douchiest, like, uh, fucking pretentious fake name you could come up with. And then they gave it to Michael Madsen. 
<laughs> <laughs> and he just is kind of there. He's a bad boy with a mysterious past. It's so bad. <laughs> Who's cooler, Press or uh, what's his name from uh, The Wizard? A little fucking kid with the power glove. Oh, the one who had all of the fucking NES games. Yeah, well, ninety-seven of them. He's Lucas. Cooler. Lucas is cooler for sure. What if Lucas was heading this operation? Dude, Lucas would have won. He would have the rest day. of them. This movie would be like 10 minutes long if Lucas was in it. <laughs> Lucas just curb stops. <laughs> <laughs> he never would have evolved the first time. But yeah, so the, the, the alien girl, and her name is Syl, by the way. It's like her code name. Yeah. Because they had like a bunch of cells that they created, and this was the one that they kept to grow. <laughs> But she, yeah, she gets on a train, and she's just, like, scarfing down, like, gas station food. <laughs> like, scarfing down, like, moon pies and Twinkies and yeah. chips and shit. Because she's trying to, like, get calories so she can grow. Okay. And just this... the roller girl, dude. This nice, like, uh... <laughs> this nice, like, motherly uh, attendant on the train comes by. And then CGI tentacles come out of Syl's face, and she gets enveloped in this, like, giant, weird cocoon thing. And, of course, it just kills the attendant. The CGI is so uh, varying in, in quality and how well it holds up. Like, I'll be honest, like, that, like, cause, yeah, that, that first part of that scene where she's, like, Syl is looking in the mirror, and, like, she's getting, like, little bumps under her skin all over her face, and I thought it looked pretty damn good. Like, yeah, I thought I, I thought that scene in particular looked really damn good for, for a movie from 95. And then the but, but then the, come out, but then like, the tentacles come out, and one graphics. Yeah, well, exactly. Like, anything that's full just CG looks horrible, but you can tell that they didn't really know what they wanted to do, or maybe, like, how to do things that they wanted. Because there's some that are just full practical... Some is a mix of both, and some is full CG. Yeah. And anytime it's full CG, it just looks fucking horrible. But I do think for 95, it probably looked really good. I agree. Yeah. Um, at the very end, when you see, like, the full-bodied alien in CG, honestly, for 95, like, that, that did look really good. Yeah. I mean, you think about the other, like, the two biggest movies I can think of at the time that were kind of, like, pioneers of CGI would be Terminator 2 and Jurassic Park. And mm -hmm. both of those... I mean, they definitely look good for the time, but they look, a l especially Jurassic Park, looks a little rough now. Yeah, but... Especially if you've got, like, 4K Blu-rays where these effects yeah. really don't hold up. Like, yeah. even Lord of the Rings starts to kind of, like, you can see the cracks in it yeah. there, which pains me to say. But <laughs> Well, it's even more impressive with Species when you know that it's Species <laughs> Species had, like, a quarter of the budget, maybe, that Jurassic Park and Terminator yeah. 2 had. Yeah, because this is, like, a nothing movie. Yeah. But, yeah, like, I... I it definitely looks bad, but it doesn't look as... It could There's look stuff coming out now that looks pretty bad. Yeah. And this had a, at least an excuse to look bad. <laughs> I mean, she gets off the train, but she's, like, taking on the attendant's, like, uniform or whatever. And do, do you just see her, like, going around, like... It's supposed to be in L.A., of course. And she just kind of is, like, buying shit. Like, she buys a... a, a wedding like dress? A, like a, yeah, like a wedding dress. Like a really, like... It looks like a German. It's like a really. Dress? I don't know. It was it was a really trashy wedding dress to me. Like if I if I saw my bride wearing that, I'd be like. Nyeh. Well, I mean, I think that's the point is that she doesn't see that it looks like stupid. No, yeah, she yeah. Looks, she looks dumb, like wandering through the streets. Well, because like, she's dress, wearing a, she's I, I wearing a something. She's wearing a fanny pack over the wedding dress. <laughs> hey, dude. That's probably something that's happening now. Well, function over form. <laughs> I mean, the first thought I had was, like, when my custom character is in a cutscene, like... Yeah. <laughs> like, when the, like, Bloodborne has its super, like, depressing cutscenes, and you've got, like, your abortion of a character with, like, bright blue skin and giant lips. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, I mean, they eventually, like, track her down to this club. Well, you didn't talk about the uh, evolution scene on the train. That was pretty hype. Oh, yeah. I mean, she gets into the cocoon, and then... She basically just like blossoms into a, a, a that's not a good word <laughs> she, <laughs> she, uh, she digivolves uh, is the term that Wes yeah, used she, uh, she into, into, a, into, into a, 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 uh, a breedable young woman <laughs> is this supposed to be like an allegory for like female sexuality or something I don't, think, I don't think so or like female <laughs> development because it feels like I definitely got like those kinds of overtones 
they even say at one point they're like oh we we made her female so she'd be more docile and controllable and we're like yeah, okay geez. which is funny because in nature like aren't females typically the more aggressive in like i think most in a lot in a lot of species huh? uh, aren't they more I, you know Funny. Yeah, I mean, I, that's one line. Like we kind of rolled our eyes, but we we're like, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She, she did evolve into a, a, a nice uh, twenty-one-year-old woman. It's yeah, because actually, she's actually only like what, like a week old. I thought it was like a month. I think, maybe. yeah, I think like a month or more. Yeah, not yeah, more than a couple like, months. Yeah, because well, yeah, like, like they, they show like this is her cell after like a minute. This is it after an hour. Guys. This is it after a week, a month, blah blah blah. You don't understand. The alien DNA they injected her with was 5,000 years old. <laughs> <coughs> where is it? Wait, this movie is like the inverse of that, where it's like, no, you don't understand. She's a week old. It's fine. <laughs> she's yeah. mature for her age. <laughs> Men physically, she's a week, but mentally, yeah. she's 20. <laughs> sure. She learned how to speak this morning. <laughs> Well, she, like, steals a bunch of money from the train. She goes out and buys the wedding dress. And then, like, the the clerk is like, oh, you need to, that'll be however much, like, $60 or something. Yeah. And uh, she just, like, cr- throws a bunch of crumpled money on the table. And she's like, oh, well, you need to be careful with your money. Not everybody is as honest as me. And then she does the same thing at the hotel, which she can just get with, like, no driver's license or anything. Yeah. I don't know, maybe it's a pre-9-11 thing. But they, um... Yeah, and then she just, uh, she's, like, looking at all these kids everywhere, like, seeing people with kids, and she's like, I want to reproduce. So she asks the the front desk guy at the hotel, she's like, where can I find a man? And he's like, oh, you can go to this club around the corner. That, uh... That club that they go to is like one genre switch away from being the Blade 2 nightclub. <laughs> <laughs> There's like just like naked dance, dancers all around in cages. Seemed like a nice wholesome place. Yeah, I'd, I'd go there. Yeah. Well, and she sees like some guy that she's trying, uh, that she wants to, to mate with. To F. To, to F. She's going to frick him. To screw. <gasps> <gasps> There's sex in this movie. Premarital sex. I, I like sex. I like that they make a point to to say that um you know like so so like this movie takes place in L.A. and they're like uh, oh well her you know societal uh, you know cultural uh, ignorance won't won't out her because this is L.A. and nothing's taboo here <laughs> <laughs> nothing yeah. sticks out just another thing Forrest explains to us <laughs> they say that after someone says that she's just gonna like go around killing people and they're like well it's L.A. that happens <laughs> oh wow. yeah. Those dirty libs, am I right? <laughs> but she, um, yeah, so she sees this girl uh, hitting on some guy that she wants to bang. And so she follows this lady into the bathroom and fucking breaks her in half. <laughs> yeah, she like fucking. Like through the stall. Yeah, no, yeah, cool. it's well, it's weird because she, she like, she's in the bathroom with her, but, but then it, it just cuts to the, to the other woman, you know, on the toilet. In the stall, she taking a shit. She's she's taking a big dumper, okay, and then and then and then you just see uh, Sills Sills hands like break through the back wall. Like I guess she went into the other room. Yeah, really. This when you think about it, this movie is just kind of a comedy of errors of her trying to get laid. <laughs> and she and it takes very surprisingly long. Yeah, she goes for, for a like woman. A woman dudes. as attractive as her, like it. it yeah. And the, like one of the dudes she tried to bang didn't even want to fuck her because he's like, I want to, I want to wait. Like, what a pussy! You know? <laughs> he deserved to die. <laughs> Be a man. Be a man. <laughs> well, and she. What was the line? It was like, I got a party to go to and no one to take me. And some fucking dork is like, Where's the party? She's like, I don't know. <laughs> And that works. <laughs> right, like, so on the it. one hand, like I guess this guy definitely wanted it. And then she decided she didn't want to, and it's this fucking dude with like Art Deco pieces all over his house. Yeah, he's clearly he, like someone with a fair bit of money, especially he, if he's living in Southern California. He turned out to be rich, but he looked like fucking Kid Rock or something. <laughs> <laughs> she walked up just, to the gnarliest dude in the bar. And she he just she, pe- to be she rich. got really lucky picking very well off dudes because just. 
imagine it, again it, if she had picked someone like us, you know, and you just take her back to your apartment and you're just like, do you want to see my my anime figure collection? Show my superhuman. Picture. Do you like my Funko Pops? <laughs> There's dick butt on the wall. Oh, here's my Hashira collection. I have three Lord of the Rings swords. <laughs> Do you want to see my Demon Slayer manga box set? What if that invigorated her more and then she just fucked you and killed you? Do you like, like, a, like immediately. Do you like headphones? M meanwhile, your sting is just glowing blue on the wall. Because <laughs> it senses evil. <laughs> <laughs> well, when she's like about to bang this dude, and then she decides she, didn't, she doesn't want to, and he's like, I don't remember exactly what he said. He basically is like, I'm not taking no for an answer, kind of thing. Yeah. And so th then you, everybody looks at each other, and they're like, this fucking dude is gonna die the like worst death ever, and yeah. it's gonna be great. And so she starts kissing him, and like rams her mouth through the back of her tongue through the back of his neck. Hell yeah, it's dude. awesome. Yeah. She brained him. That might be the best part of the movie for me. Really? <laughs> she really gave him a head. <laughs> <laughs> Coward. <laughs> the movie's just kind of that. For yeah, a, it's just a like jumping it. from dude to dude. It's just kind of it's just kind of them chasing her and just barely getting there too late until they eventually do catch up with her. You know? Yeah, like she finds another. <clears throat> she gets hit by a car at one point, and then some guy brings her to the hospital, pays for her. Uh, pays her bill and then he she's just kind of like all right can we go they go back to his like really nice place she tries to fuck him in the hot tub and he's like oh no i'm waiting till marriage and yeah she doesn't like that not but, one but, bit but she can tell because force whitaker is like a really strong force user <laughs> she's just she senses a disturbance in the force and so she's trying to keep the guy quiet and she's just like holding his head under the fucking water <laughs> Yeah, but then she evolves into, like, her, uh, Frieza form, and then uh, fucking shoves a tentacle in his mouth and chokes him to death. Well, and, and I think that's, that's when God, we also see, hot. like, you get sick. a glimpse of it that, that like tentacle times. comes out of, like, her alien nipples. Like, she's got titty dicks. Yeah, she's got projectile titties. <laughs> yeah, with, like, spaghetti that comes out. Yeah. It was very cool. It's really weird. It I mean, cool. every every now and then, when you when 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 she's thinking about reproducing, you you see like flashes of I guess what what her species looks like. Mating. Yeah, but it's just like yeah, just two of the aliens well, fucking. Yeah, she looks like an X-rated Power Ranger villain. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Power Ranger villain kind of mixed with the main robot from Metropolis a little bit. Like, yeah, it's a little weird. Oh, it's, it's really like, weird. It's H.R. Geiger, so it's like a really weird, like, psychosexual it's type It's pretty gnarly. Style, but it still looks Lots dumb. of, like, bone structure, giant tits. And yeah. It's just kind of goofy looking. But yeah, she becomes her Power Ranger villain form and and murders this guy. Oh, what? And I don't know, just, sorry, um, why, like, every guy that she's trying to bone, she's always making out with them. And, like, she's trying so hard to, like, get a baby inside her as fast as possible. It's like, well, if she's, like, driven, like, purely by, like, you know, like, the, the, the necessary things to make a baby, why is she wasting time making out? Like, just get to the fucking, well, the PIV, man. Well, I guess maybe she probably saw people kissing in the club, so she's like, oh, that's how you're, like, initiating? Or on the HBO in the motel room. Oh, when, true. When I didn't she think flipped about around that. and like there's three Man, there's, titties there just happened to be a sex scene on. There's in this movie that I didn't expect. Yeah, really, it's it's very smart. Very but do you well think? Lit. Do you think? Okay, yeah. So so she sees on TV, very various things that inform her decision making later. Like like when she dyes her hair as a disguise. When you know she fucks. Uh, I don't remember what else she sees on TV. But do do you think this movie's trying to say that that TV is poisoning our youth? What better way to convey that message than with 1995 species? <laughs> <laughs> it's very mixed we, messages. We really do it's, live it's, in a society. It's much like how Rambo is like trying to say that, that war is, te is hell, but then it's like uber fucking violent and awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, Call of Duty used to do the same shit before they just went like off the rails. Whenever you died, they would just have like an anti-war quote from some politician. Yeah. But, um... Oh, one thing that I forgot to mention during the scene where she's try making out with the dude in the hot tub, she just says to him, I want a baby. And he's like, what? <laughs> he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> Rightfully oh, yeah. so. I forgot about that. And that's when she kills him. Yeah, well, he fucked up. He got face fucked to death. Yeah. What a way to go. So I want to go.
Yeah. Maybe not in a hot tub, though. So. Yeah. Yeah. With a mouthful of meat. With the shmeat. She also, down she also, uh, <laughs> she fakes her own death to get, to throw the, you know, the team off her trail. Yeah, that's like the really only, like, super elaborate yeah. thing like that yeah like a lot of stuff like again like it's more believable she could like kind of like bullshit her way through but that's like an elaborate plan where she like crashes a car and it explodes and she leaves behind like somebody's thumb well she's she's like naked and she gets into this woman's car and is like hell hey you've got to help me but then she i guess is taken home ties the woman to the bed then sleeps in the bed with the woman when she's tied up has a nightmare <laughs> wakes up and this lady's like fucking terrified she's like do you ever have nightmares <laughs> <laughs> she's like yep <laughs> it's like yo can you let me go like i'm not gonna hurt you and she's like yes you will you just don't know it yet <laughs> like shut the fuck up yeah just, why, there's why a couple of eye rolly lines <laughs> like that yeah we really do live in a society but then she it's, i up. mean it's just funny how she has that like perception of of you know like humanity when like the first quite a few people that she that she interacts with are really nice to her you know yeah and like look well, out for her, and help her out, like bed kingsley trying to kill her yeah i guess that's true <laughs> and oh there's a, a little like not so subtle foreshadowing is he mouths I'm sorry through the glass and so then she's able to read lips again she's a fucking terminator yeah yeah she's like reading out what he's saying as he's saying it like from inside a car 50 feet away yeah that scene confused me at first I, I don't know I, I'm glad you were there to explain it to me Justin well this is the second time that I've seen it so I wasn't just like zoning yeah maybe out I wasn't yeah like super paying attention to pick up on that but you know Anyway, this movie has a lot of layers. <laughs> she also uh, clipped her own finger off in front of her. That was pretty, pretty metal. Yeah, yeah and then clips the the woman's finger that she's with. Yeah, her finger grew back. I wonder if she was thinking. I wonder if her finger will grow back, and then she cut it off. Well, I. Well, like uh, again, again, that scene confused me. Yeah, like she she cuts off her own thumb, and then and and it grows back, and then she cuts off the hostage's thumb. And, and then, yeah, like, she leaves behind the thumb in the car crash, her thumb, I guess, in the car crash, mm -hmm. to, to fake her own death. Um, and it's exactly what Peter Pettigrew did in Harry Potter. This movie is ahead of its time. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, uh, these scientists looking for an alien, they would have just found the thumb and only studied that. And not the other charred remains of the body or, exactly. or anything it, else. Yeah, like yeah. you're telling me the only remains oh, they found of her. it was just incinerated completely. You're yeah, telling like me the only thing they dead. found was a thumb, and they were just like, cool, that's good enough for me. <laughs> yeah, then they're like, nope, well, she's dead, we're yeah. done. I thought these were scientists, they're dumber than rocks. It yeah. was pretty great, though. She drove the car off a cliff, and it just went fucking flying into an electrical box and blew up. Oh, yeah, because she, she, she had, like, she had, like... that fucking poor woman in it! Yeah. Why, why is she taking this woman along? Yeah. Dude, she got it worse than, like, everybody else in the movie. No, yeah, she did, because, yeah, she cuts off her thumb, too, and, it's just, yeah. and so that means that this poor woman is just, like, bleeding out, and this is while Syl is walking around... She gets spotted by Forrest Whitaker, like, around the club, I think. Yeah, Is it in the club? Because they go back to the club to, like, scout it no, out. No, that's later, because they thought oh. that she was dead, right? At that point? No, they were going back to the club so they could scout her out, because she was going to come back to find another mate. You're right. And then right. Forrest yeah. Whitaker finds her, and because of his psychic Jedi powers, he's like, it's you. And so she runs away, she he gets the rest of the, the Avengers squad... And then they chase after her, and that's when she fakes her own death. Right, right. She does a straight up like bailout from GTA Four. <laughs> I, I I couldn't help but think of a uh, of the Always Sunny episode where Mac and Charlie fucking off fake their own deaths. <laughs> that is like the gr one of the greatest episodes. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> I was in tears watching that the first time. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so then they th they were like, oh, she's she's fucking dead, I guess. And uh, again. Like we said, there's just, like, no due diligence whatsoever, but everyone except for, I guess, Michael Madsen's kind of like, oh, this seemed a little too easy. I wanted there to be more sport in it. <laughs> Which is stupid, but okay. And, like, him and the uh, the main, like, female team member, I don't remember her name, it's like Dr. Baker, I think. Sure. Sure. <laughs> um, like, they're they're pretty horny. For each other no yeah Michael like as Madsen. soon as as soon as they think their their jobs done, they're like all right let's go get a room let's, let's hump and uh like 
Dr. Robotnik's trying to rub <laughs> Robotnik. <laughs> Dr. Octopus. That wasn't like a fucking... <laughs> uh, that's quite the slip. Dr. Octopus is trying to mack, and he keeps striking out, and Forrest Whitaker's like, She doesn't like you. She likes press. And he's like, fucking thanks, man. <laughs> so then uh, they, they, they go to the club to just, like, hang out and get drinks, I guess. Yeah, they're just celebrating. Yeah. And, um... And, and Dr. Wiley goes up to, uh, like, these two attractive young women. He's like, hey, come here often. And these two guys just, like, get right slide in front of him. In. Like, they slide right in front of him into the uh, into the two women. Like, oh, well, this is, like, Toby and this is Dan. What? I forgot your name. And he's just like, fuck this. And he goes to bed. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and Syl, Syl finds him. <gasps> still finds him and, no uh, and, and, and he she's just and in it, his room and she's well, like i stole the key and again he doesn't recognize her because she saw on tv earlier that that hair dye is a thing so she dyed her hair and like cut it yeah a little she's bit able to follow all the instructions and yeah do that without fucking anything up really. yeah even though <laughs> dying your hair is really fucking hard and she just wings it yeah like perfectly to a completely different color. No, yeah, I mean her hair looks like it was fucking like professionally done. It's almost <laughs> like it was a hair piece and it wasn't her real hair. Mm. Oh, come on, get out of here. But um, yeah. So she finds uh, what's another doctor? What's uh, another funny doctor character? Uh, 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 uh Doc uh, from Back to the Future. Just Doc. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Doc Brown. Oh yeah, yeah. Shit, I haven't seen that movie in a while. Doc, Doctor Brown. <laughs> Yeah, Doc Brown uh, finds her in his room, and she's just like, "Fill me." And he's like, "I." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she it's vo- it's really it, funny. This, it, like, it, like they, there could not be a, a clear example of thinking with your dick, because uh, again, like they've seen, like they've been following her around, and they see that like she her goal is to get knocked up, and and she will do anyone. And then as soon as, as Dr. Octopus has a woman literally, like, serving herself up on a, on a fucking silver platter to him and is like, let's hump, he's like, nothing suspicious about that, let's, let's go. Hump. <laughs> Let us hump. Yeah. He's like, sure, why not? Yeah. Then she evolved using his cum stone. <laughs> <laughs> what do we say that she got the cum buff? <laughs> Where she, she was like, I feel it. And he's like, what? Life! And then he's like, holy fuck. He doesn't get that, like, gruesome of a death, though. Yeah. I wanted him to have, like, an awesome death, but she just kind of, like, slashes him. Yeah, she just kind of slashes his neck. It's not that that crazy. Yeah. Maybe Uh, maybe she went easy on him because she was grateful to him. Oh, and while while they're boning, uh, Forrest Whitaker, he senses a disturbance in the force again. And he's, like, walking through the hotel, and he, like, puts his hand on the door. (laughs) And he can just, like, have visions of them fucking, and he's like... Oh no, Arden's fucking. <laughs> Wait, so is every empath on Twitter able to do that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Every yeah. insufferable fuck that thinks that they're like that much more emotionally intelligent because they say that they are. Yeah. And that's my soapbox. Just, I'm <laughs> sensing a lot of skepticism from you. Yeah, what's wrong? And then I think it's dumb. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Like, especially if you have to say it. Yeah. And, like, everybody says it. Everybody's like, oh, I'm an empath. It's like, so they, they get there just a little too late. And and Dr. Uh, Cunnilingus is dead. Um, and, they, <laughs> and, then, and then they chase her into the sewers. And then... Yeah, every movie has to have a sewer level. Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah, yeah. The shit, shit goes down. Yeah, they, she kind of CG flies around the room while they... Have like a she also gives birth. Yeah, yeah. They fucking follow her, but but not before she she poops out a child. It like has a, like a she, long CGI frog tongue that skewers a rat. Yeah, she poops out like a four year old son. <laughs> it's crazy how like she took a few months to become you know like the size of a child, but this child comes out like a four year old. Like well, two he's... minutes old, and he's already like walking. Yeah. Well, he's more evolved. He's the first natural birth. No oh, shit, because she was created by a, in a lab. Oh, my God. So maybe She's the science like Mewtwo. is different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, I love that we just like keep getting these like little footage of like these cute little rats, and the kid like opens his mouth, a terrible looking CGI tongue comes out, and his like eyes get bigger. 
Yeah. And yeah, yeah, like it's just like an action scene, and it's really dumb. Yeah, I mean, they, probably, like, this is kind of where the movie starts to lose me a bit. Where I'm like, okay, I don't care. Well, it just kind of you, you just after you just kind of see yes, yeah, so you kind of see where it's going. Like they they unload their fucking bullets and flamethrower into her. Uh, th- there's like an oil. Uh, fucking puddle down there for some reason. Oil um, lake. Well, yeah, it's because it's L.A. <laughs> of course. <laughs> um, and so sure. of course, like the the flamethrower ends up, you know, m- you know, turning it into like a lake of fire. Huh? Uh-huh. And uh, and yeah, they like they they kill the the child, and then and then they kill her with a really lame one liner. Yeah, it's gotta she be one like Terminator Two death. For a minute. Like, so, so they, you know, they, she's in the, in the, you know, the fiery depths of, of hell and, and shit. And, and Force Whitaker's trying to climb back up. And, and, and she grabs him. And then fucking Michael Madsen is like, you know, you know, he's like, duck. And he, and he points a shotgun right at her head. And, and, and what does he say? He's like, let go of him, mother, f- or let go, you motherfucker. Yeah, let, let go, motherfucker. That's the one liner that you kill the alien. And then he shoots shit. and her head explodes. And I was like, man, you could have gone so many different directions with that. That's, su- that's, I just can't get over what a lame one liner that is. Like, that, that's so basic. It hurts me on a spiritual level when a movie <laughs> sets up for a one liner. An epic one-liner, and they just fucking fail. Like he's Michael Madsen, he could have said anything. He could have been like, "Heads up," and then just fucking blow her brains out. Yeah, it like great. It was all teed and, up and, like, to the go. The head explosion's great too, and bursts yeah. apart like a grapefruit. Yeah. Or if he was like, "Blow me," and then just, I don't, I don't fuck, like, anything. Dude, we we should always be in the writers' room. <laughs> oh, no. Retroactively, because I I man, I just can't get over what a lame one-liner that is. It's so fucking basic, like. Yeah, like for how stupid this is, it really does just like peter out by the end. Yeah. Yeah. And then, oh, but there was like a part where Michael Madsen, he's able to like cut off one of the the dick titty tentacle things. And it's just there, but then like the rats start eating it. And so the rats become like infected with the human. Okay. With with the alien DNA. I was was confused about that. Like it's the T virus. Yeah. Yeah. That's like your sequel teaser is like after they leave and they think the job's done. uh, One of the rats, you know, shoots out its alien tongue and eats the other rat whole. Um, And yeah, I was kind of like, wait, did she fuck the rat? Like why? What? (laughs) Like Why is the rat? And uh, yeah, I guess just ingesting some of the alien altered its DNA. I well, guess. See, it same, seems I don't to know. set up a sequel. I've never seen any of the sequels, but like I assume that it doesn't have to do with alien rats, right? It's, prob- <laughs> yeah, it's just like a hot so. chick again, right? Well, that, that's the thing is they didn't, they, they didn't even need that <laughs> they rat need thing. Some kind of marketing for it. They didn't even they didn't even need that rat thing to like ha- be perfectly set up for the sequel because earlier in the movie they say like we had I think they say they like they had seven separate cells that they were bioengineering oh, I forgot and and, about and only that. and only one of them sill is the one that that you know they that they, they l- allowed to grow so like they already fucking set up like they have other cells that can be fucked with like oh yeah yeah i forgot about that that makes sense so technically they could have had like six more sequels well <laughs> i think <laughs> through all the cells that they had well i thought maybe i actually completely forgot about the other cells i just figured that <clears> since <throat> the rat like the final shot is the rat killing the other rat with the long like frog tongue I thought, is this supposed to, like, maybe the rat goes out and, like, bites somebody, and then it becomes the alien, but then it and becomes, like, a zombie movie? Yeah, I guess that's supposed to be the implication. But, again, like, they just... Well, what, what about all the dudes that she, like, makes out with the whole time? Yeah. Like, I don't know. Wouldn't that be the same effect? Or does it have to be, fle- like, ingesting maybe, flesh? Maybe it's that, because, like, like I said, her birth was scientific, right? And then when she actually had a quote-unquote natural birth, like when she created her alien hybrid thing, then that's when shit hit the fan. Or, or was able to hit the fan, maybe. You know, now that we've described this whole plot, and, like, looking back on it, is it kind of too similar to the thing? You know? Because, like, it's just, like, her, her, like, hiding in plain sight, you know? Like, yeah, trying to blend in with humans, you know? It's kind of just a, a stupider version of that movie. <laughs> Species is fine if you don't think about it too much. No, yeah, I still enjoyed it overall. <laughs> yeah. You know, I had a good time with it. Yeah, I had a great time watching it. Way better than I thought I was going to. Yeah. What would you give it out of ten? Five or six. Uh, I, I'm I'm docking points for Forrest Whitaker. <laughs> I think it's a four, but I could be persuaded to a five. Really? I think it's fairly entertaining. Uh, I'm going to probably give it like a six. 
honestly. Yeah. Encroaching on seven, but I don't want to give it a seven. Oof. Yeah, it's pretty. That's pretty generous. <laughs> well, you, it's like I still think that this is shit, but I enjoyed it at the expense of the movie. Yeah. You know what I usually watch, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I don't think anyone's surprised. Yeah. But yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. Solid cheese. Six out of ten. I mean, I guess we don't really need to go through like a good thing because there's plenty to like here. Oh, the last shot that Harlow mentioned. I'll just go ahead and say this, even if you guys don't have one. I like that they used the practical effect rat at the very, very end when it got infected and used the tongue. Like that final shot where uh, it was just a giant rat and did the tongue thing. I thought that was great. <laughs> Incredible. No, yeah, when when her alien body was was practical, it looked really good. Yeah, I agree. You know? The cocoon. Yeah, Har- Harlan cool was too. getting really turned on. Yeah. Dude, this movie is the source of a lot of confused boners. Harlan was a full mass the whole time. <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> Jesus Christ. I mean, yeah, I guess the, the tone of this is, like, perfectly cheesy, and I think it's kind of endearing in a weird way. Mm. I like this better this time than the first time I watched it. The first time I watched it, I was like, like, we were still laughing at it, but I was like, okay, this is shit. And now I'm watching it, I'm like, this is shit, but I kind of like it. I, ex- <laughs> I expected it to be a lot, a lot worse, a lot stupider. You I know? guess I could give it a six in terms of my enjoyment. But... Ye- yeah. So, what's our what's our trivia? I have none. Oh. I'm sorry. There's well, no sucks. interesting thing. Yeah, there was species. nothing interesting about it. Sorry. Well, that Damn. blows. You know, All it's right. bad when the trivia is like these two characters would go on to star in this movie later. Like, fuck off, IMDb. That's not trivia. So it was just like a cut and dry production. Nothing interesting or bad happened. I guess so. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, I guess that's good. Everything went smoothly. Everybody had fun. <laughs> yeah. Nothing of note. Yeah. <laughs> so, what are we watching next time? Uh, let's kind of scared to ask. Uh, me too. Oh, bringing out the wheel. <laughs> uh, we're watching uh, 1990s Captain America. Yes! <laughs> Starring Red Brown, yes! our boy. I am so fucking down. Let's Great. go. Hey. Brown. Red Just, Red be Brown. excited. It's a superhero <laughs> movie, but from way back in the okay, fucking day. It's, it's okay, going to be really stupid. Okay. Bro. Be excited. It's fucking Captain America starring your. All right, I'll take it. I'll take it. Be excited. Red, <laughs> brown, red, red, brown, red, brown, red, brown, red, brown, red, brown, red, brown. Red, brown. Red, brown. Red, brown. Red, brown. Bye. Uh, we'll see you for Captain America. Uh, farewell, humans. The three of us are off to mate now. We're gonna mate. We're gonna mate. We're gonna master mate. We're gonna mate. <laughs> This is the worst <laughs> goodbye we've ever done. Yeah, this sucks. This suck, cock. <laughs>